when you get into med school, you have a lot of questions that you are asking yourself. And one of those questions is how to study effectively. And this is a problem you might struggle with until the very end of your studies. Personally, there are a few things I wish I knew much earlier. In this video, I want to share with you what have worked and still working for me. And hopefully it will help you answer the big question. Stay tuned. Hello everyone. My name is Prince Audrey and I am a medical student at the University of Rwanda, College of Medicine and Health Sciences. Throughout the years in medicine, I believe everyone finds the right balance in terms of studying and managing life in general. But it doesn't hurt to know what other people think and what have worked for them because it just might work for you too. So before we delve into this, I just want to say to get through medicine, you don't just need a lot of passion, but also the right guidance, uh, consistency, and the right material will get you far. So without further ado, let's get into this. Okay, first thing, you have to be willing to read a lot. It's a lifelong learning experience. And in your own schedule, find some time to read and be consistent about this. Because you just can never know when something you read today might hurt. Plus, it will prevent you from stressing out when the, uh, the exam period finally comes. Because the more you ignore the things you should be doing, the more stress you're putting on yourself in the future. So do commit to it and it will pay out one day. While your lectures and your seniors are your first and foremost resource and trying to understand what they want you to know is very crucial, most of the time you will find yourself having to study by yourself and taking the charge and that's okay. But the question remains, what are the best literatures you may use and when so that you may increase the chance of succeeding in this field? There are tons of resources to use, such that the problem will be to choose which ones are worth your time. But there are those that have caught a lot of our attention over the years. We have high yield resources. Okay, so these are really compact, really dense books that cover the most important things you need to know. And you may use this when you just started preparing for an exam maybe or you are in a, a clerkship or you just wanted to remind yourself of something on your material maybe you start you you you're trying to remind yourself of something about a topic and you want to read it uh, really fast or you want to cover the most important things and then move on for high yield material, I recommend Oxford Handbook of Clinical Medicine. You just can't go wrong with this book. It gives you straightforward information about history taking, physical exams, you know, investigations, diagnosis, and some uh, treatment guidance. In just a few pages of your book, you have a lot of information and you can just use this book when you're in a clerkship. You can have it as a pocket book. It's very, very. Another one I recommend is First Aid for USMA Step 1, 2, and 3. I found these books to be summarized. They give you the main information about the pathology, the treatment, the everything you need to know but you know they are summarized that's the only problem you will meet but if you ever uh, want to learn more and get the details about this book you can use another one which is called the first aid for the basic sciences organ systems you know so it will give you the the, the, the notes you need about every topic that have been covered in the first aid, step one, two, and three. The next one is Rapid Review by Dr. Edward Gorian 
in case you don't know who that is, uh, Dr. Edward is a doctor at Oklahoma University and he wrote this, this book, it's a book about pathophysiology and he explains it very well. There are actually even audios of him uh, teaching this, uh, this, these uh, pathophysiology topics about every organ system. I will put the link in the description below in case you want to hear them but right now we can't talk much about it I'm just letting you know that this is a good book and you should definitely check it out the next one is Pathoma okay I think Pathoma is a company or something but it, it produces uh, books about pathology and even videos so you can use either one of them you want um, it's a very great book of pathology and in terms of pathology I haven't found any any other book that covers a lot of topics and like everything in pathology like pathoma maybe you can check it out and tell me what you and then to top that you can use master the boards USMLE best the latest version uh, okay this this book is a summary of the clinical procedures and they give you some clinical problems and then they try to answer those problems using uh, the, the material they are writing on that uh, topic so definitely check it out after you have al already covered the, those first aid USMLE step one two and three it's a, a it's a good idea and you can also check it out when you are in track ships to get to know some clinical procedures that you might you might need uh, during your rounds i feel like these books are somehow advanced and you should use them accordingly but uh, let's go on to some websites the websites that i have found to be useful uh, one of them and one of the most important is uptodate.com okay so this website uh, contains evidence-based uh, topics like about everything any pathology any disease you think any any clinical procedure everything that you can find in an, an article somewhere else you can find it on uptodate.com and they will even give you the links to find those articles so you can read more about what you want your what you're searching for and what you want to learn in general so i recommend using uptodate.com it's great and one thing you should know about it uh, some institutions do have access to it uh, for example hospitals in my case my university have access to it so you can uh, in, in case you are on, on if you manage to be on the terminal or Wi-Fi for example on the premises you can create an account as a student on update for free and then you can go on and browse otherwise it might be a little tricky <laughs> Uh, to log into it or create an account on it the next one is Mendeley.com okay I know you're going to say Mendeley is a reference manager but help me out Mendeley is connected to Elsevier Publishers and Elsevier Publishers do have a lot of articles and books about medicine so when you go on the Elsevier website and you try to find a book or an article, they will give you a lot and you can just import those into Mendeley and read them through there. You can get on another website, any website, let's say PubMed.com and you're trying to find an article about something and then you stumble upon something you like, you can import that to Mendeley and it would actually help you organize your things you don't just have to 
organize references when you need them for a research paper. You can even organize those books there in Mendeley. You can create a collection folder, you can uh, create a group folder and then group them according to how you, you, you would like it for those, those uh, for example, you can group those for pathology, you can group the, those for microbiology and whatever, whatever, and then uh, when you actually need them, uh, in, when you are uh, doing a research paper, you can come back to Mendeley.com and then find them organized. And this is something you need to get into the habit of doing because you will need these references one day or another. It, you just will use it extensively, if I can say that. The next one is Medscape.com. I'm pretty sure you know this or have heard of it. Of it. Um, whatever you can find on up to date, you can find on Medscape. Okay. And the next is Osmosis.com. So this is um, uh, videos. They give you videos and then they give you questions and you try to answer them and, they, and then they correct you. You won't always have the motivation to read. Sometimes you will just feel like you just want to use videos and um, maybe audio to study. So if you can't read, just hop on osmosis and learn through video. All right. Okay. So let's talk about reference books now. What are reference books? These are really thick books that gives you information in a very detailed format. So you may use these books when you have enough time. Like you just started your semester studies and you're not in any hurry to learn something fast. Okay, so you have enough time and you want to get deep into the gist of things, you know. These are the best books for that time. One, Grey's Anatomy for Students. I'm pretty sure there isn't any medical student who have never met this book. Okay, so I'm just gonna mention this as an honorable mention. Well, because I have to mention it. Another one is Atlas of the Human Anatomy. Uh, this, this will give you the pictures and diagrams you need to know the human anatomy in a 2D model. Okay, so if you want to appreciate the human anatomy in a 3D model, you might use Human Sectional Anatomy book or Anatomy 360. It will give you the 3D model of this, the human uh, anatomy, the organs, the everything you need to know in 3D because most of the time you need to appreciate a 3D model of something to understand how it works. Another good book you might appreciate is Physiology by Linda Constanzo. Okay, it's also from the Savio Publishers. So, for those who want to understand how the human body works, the physiology behind it, the mechanisms, you know, it's best for preclinical years where you are still doing uh, basic physiology and you know trying to connect it with other science because you do need uh, to catch the basics while you're still young and while you're still in the earlier years of medicine because further along the way in the last years of medicine what you're doing literally is you are taking all the basic knowledge you've learned from your preclinic years and then you're trying to connect them, you know, and trying to get a sympathetic idea of how they work together. And then when you get into the clinic years, you can use Kumar and Clark's Clinical Medicine. Uh, this is a very good book too. It's a reference book. Another one is Harrison's Principles of Internal Medicine. This is like a core of medicine. Next is Rang and Deo's Pharmacology. For those who want to appreciate pharmacology and learn it 
very well. You can use Lang and Dales. And then the last three, we are looking at Macroe's clinical examination. And this is for clinical skills. You know, it's best to start mastering those because you will need them for life. And of course, you can always uh, refer yourself uh, in the past exam papers and get an idea of what you have learned so far. You know, I recommend that you find what works best for you and just go with that. I believe if you use this material, it is possible uh, to catch a lot of knowledge in such a short time and therefore increase your overall study efficiency. Unless you can and you want to, you don't have to buy these books, you know, because they are really expensive and the market around them will make them really expensive. So you can get a copy. You can get a copy of these books from your university library, or you can always reach, uh, reach up to us at UHill. Obviously, I can put the links to get these books uh, in the description because of copyright issues. And that's it. I hope it was helpful. I don't know. Uh, if you have any idea, let's keep discussing in the comments and let me know what you think. Um, embrace that hunger for knowledge. You know, let it drive you and know that everything is going to be okay in the end. And if it's not okay, it's not the end either. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more information regarding health. See you next time.